And uh, Dr. Kondik, I will now recognize you for five minutes. We have some audio visual. Yes, ma'am. And would you turn your mic on and pull that close to you, please? Yes. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Great. Uh, Chairman Franks, Congressman Nadler, distinguished members of the subcommittee, I'm Dr. Maureen Kondik, Associate Professor of Neurobiology and Adjunct Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Utah School of Medicine. I thank you for this opportunity to testify. So the experience of pain is obviously very complex. Here I've summarized the important events of brain development relevant to pain perception. The three points I'd like to emphasize are these. First, brain development begins very early, by four weeks post-fertilization. Second, the neural circuitry underlying the most basic response to pain is in place by eight weeks. This is the earliest point at which a fetus can feel pain at any, in any capacity. And finally, the circuitry in the thalamus that's primarily responsible for both fetal and adult pain perception develops between 12 and 18 weeks post-fertilization. At this stage, a fetus is very well developed. All of the organs and structures are fully formed. She has a face, fingerprints, and based on my own experience with three pregnancies, a definite personality. The debate over fetal pain is not whether pain is detected by a fetus at 20 weeks, there's essentially universal agreement on this point in the scientific community. Rather, the debate concerns how pain is experienced, whether a fetus has the same pain experience as a newborn or an adult. Recently, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, or ACOG, the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and a review in the Journal of the American Medical Association have all addressed this point. Yet these reports have received serious scientific criticism. And surprisingly, they all assumed without evidence that for a fetus to have a conscious experience of pain, certain late developing cortical structures must exist. Yet many conclusive modern lines of evidence contradict this view, and I'm going to present just two of them. First, it's clear that children born without cortical brain structures are capable of consciousness, including smiling when pleased, having preferences for particular kinds of music, and having adverse reactions to pain. Here is a picture of such a patient recognizing her physician. This little girl was described in this case report as being a very happy child who particularly liked dancing to um, rock music. Yet, well over 80% of her brain is missing. And therefore, she does not possess the structures that ACOG and others erroneously insist are required for conscious recognition of her position, for example. This is a scan of the little girl's brain. The red star here indicates the limited area of the cortex that she possesses. And the yellow stars indicate empty space in the regions that ACOG and others claim the parts of the brain that are required for conscious pain perception should exist. The blue star indicates the position of the thalamus uh, which is the region of the brain that is in fact responsible for pain perception in this patient and in all human beings at all stages of life. And as I've noted, the pain perception circuitry in this region of the brain is in place by 18 weeks. So a second line of evidence against the conclusions of ACOG and others is the large body of direct experimental data from adult humans that demonstrates that neither removing nor stimulating the cortex changes our experience of pain whereas stimulating or removing lower brain structures, such as the thalamus, does. So for example, a recent study analyzed and videotaped behavioral responses of adult alert patients to 4,160 cortical stimulations. And the authors note that pain responses were very scarce, representing less than 1.5% of all the responses they observed. The authors then conclude that even for adult humans, in contrast to the JAMA report, the ACOG report, and the Royal Society reports that have been cited, the cortex is largely not involved in the conscious perception of pain. Pain perception is localized to the thalamus, and this circuitry is in place by 18 weeks post-fertilization. In addition to the neurobiological information I've just presented, what we directly observe about a fetus's response to pain is also very clear. 
Fetuses delivered prematurely exhibit pain-related behaviors, such as those shown here. Pain response observations are very precise, and they're based on objective criteria. Strikingly, the earlier fetuses are delivered, the stronger their response to pain. And this is due to the absence of later arising brain circuitry that actually inhibits a pain response in older infants and in adults. Similarly, fetuses at 20 weeks post-fertilization have an increase in stress hormones in response to painful stimuli that can be eliminated by appropriate anesthesia, just as for an adult. These and many other direct observations of fetal behavior and physiology have resulted in a clear consensus among professional anesthesiologists that the use of anesthesia is warranted in cases of fetal surgery, not based on pragmatic considerations like the suppression of fetal movement, but rather based primarily on the fetus's experience of pain. Finally, I'd like to conclude by saying we really must consider our own experience and ask what kind of a society we want to be. You know, we're all horrified by the pictures of the infants that were brutally killed by convicted murderer Kermit Gosnell. And yet, we tolerate the same brutality, and even worse, for humans at 20 weeks of development. Imposing pain on any pain-capable living creature is cruelty, and ignoring the pain experienced by another human for any reason is barbaric. We don't need to know if a fetus experiences pain precisely in the same way we do. We simply have to decide whether we're going to choose to ignore the pain of the fetus or not. It is entirely uncontested in the scientific and medical literature that a fetus experiences pain in some capacity from as early as eight weeks. And most modern neuroscientists conclude that the thalamic circuitry that's in place by 18 weeks post-fertilization is primarily responsible for human experience of pain at all stages of life. Given that fetuses are members of the human species, human beings like us, they deserve the benefit of the doubt regarding their experience of pain and protection from cruelty under the law. Thank you very much.